Hey guys, my name is Nikki Turner, and this is my Dublin pre-K reflection over my first field placement. Dublin Elementary School is in Dublin, Texas, um, located about 10 minutes outside of Stephenville, not far at all. Um, my mentor teacher's name is Miss Truesdale, and we had a teaching aide named Miss Zavala. Um, I taught, like I said, pre-K. We had about eight girls and seven boys. Lesson planning. My teacher taught me a little more than I usually am used to um, about lesson planning. They do all of their lesson plannings for the whole semester at the beginning of the semester. So it's like a one week training professional development type thing to where they plan the whole semester like in the picture on the right here um, and what they're going to be learning it's in English and Spanish so that it can be sent home to families and there's a lot of Spanish speaking in the schools so I thought that was pretty cool to see that they had everything already planned out my mentor teacher gave me a weekly lesson cycle and made sure that I was on track and that I knew what was going on so I could help in any way possible. Um, she is the first mentor teacher that ever had me plan a micro teach and like actually planned it with me. Usually my mentor teachers would be like, yeah, just do whatever. But this one was like, this is what we're learning on this day way in advance so that I could plan for it. And then she'd ask me questions every time I went in. She made sure that I was learning from her instead of just surviving and I really appreciated that because she made sure that I was going to be successful uh, underneath her. Um, she does involve her teacher aide in the classroom really well and into planning. Um, she always asks questions to the teacher aide. She helps the teacher. It, she, the teacher aide doesn't really feel like a teacher aide. She feels like another teacher in the classroom, which I think should be that way. Um, she also helps, the teacher aide helps in classroom management because she speaks Spanish and there's a lot of kids that are bilingual or know two different languages. Um, so it's good to have her in there. But I thought it was really cool how my mentor teacher involved her teacher aide in the classroom and made sure that she had the relationship with the students and with her and me as well. Lesson delivery. The only thing I didn't really like about my mentor teacher is that she used videos to teach. And she didn't, I didn't really get to see a whole lot of like instruction coming from my mentor teacher. A lot of it came from videos and I understand how videos can help um, kids of that age, you know, like it keeps them engaged and piques their interest, you know, but I don't agree with the amount of videos that she taught, she, or that she used to teach, she um, would have them watch a video like teaching the number eight and the video would teach it so like not that it's a lazy way to teach but I think that it it would be meaning more meaningful for the kids if it came from somebody that they trusted and could see it like in real life Um, she did read read aloud books once every day um, I would in my future classroom like to see more read alouds However, I know that, you know, like there's other things you have to teach as well, but you can always teach with a book. And it's always fun to watch her do the read alouds because the kids are so engaged with her and she makes sure to like ask them questions, keep them engaged, have them infer what they think is going to happen. Um, for a pre-K class, these four, three, four, five-year-olds really did a lot of worksheets that I did not really think was what a pre-k class should be doing. Pre-k should be doing arts and crafts, hands-on, making things like to work on their motor skills and stuff. Um, but they did do a lot of worksheets and when we were planning my micro teach she asked me to incorporate a worksheet that they could do and I didn't really feel comfortable with that. I mean I did it because it's her classroom but I think that my like my future students like would want they need to have that like hands-on tactile touching when they're doing so that they can learn and learn other things as well. My mentor teacher, like I said, did ask lots of questions. She made sure that she checked for understanding very well. 
She was very informal in her assessment, and I didn't really get to see formal assessment until the last day I was there. I got to see how she administered her end of six weeks test um, for her kids, and it was a lot different than what I expected. A six weeks test, you know, like you think that it's going to be the um, test multiple choice or an essay or something, but you can't do that with little kids, and I thought it was really cool to see how she did it, like she would bring the student up to the desk and just show them different colors of the crayons and they had to say the colors and they had to count as high as they could count. And I got to see the reports from the beginning of the semester to the end of the eight weeks when I was there. And from in that time alone, um, the biggest and most interesting growth was one student that I didn't even realize she was learning as much as she was, but she could only count to three on her own at the beginning of the semester. And by the time we were done teaching her, she could te she could count to 78 on her own. So that was pretty cool to watch and to see the growth and how excited she got when she got those right. My mentor teacher used a color chart for her classroom management. I thought it was really interesting. She didn't use the color chart unless she absolutely needed to and like nothing else was working. But the students also realized that if it came down to it and they had to go change their color, they're like, oh, I really messed up. And that was really kind of cool to see how like some teachers abuse the color chart and like make them change their colors for every single thing and it's just ineffective but this one was very effective like if they went and changed their color like it was like the end of the world and by changing the color you had to sit out not five minutes at recess but you had to sit out five minutes at the center time and while every, you had to watch while all your friends were playing without you and so that's pretty traumatizing I think for a kid um sitting in a spot watching their kids have their friends have fun um, but by the, before my mentor teacher would allow that student to go back to playing she would have a conference with them at their desk and they had to tell them or tell her why she um, or they had to change their color and until they were able to discuss why they had to change their color they couldn't change it back to green so there's green yellow and red um, so if they had to change their color to yellow, then um, they had to say why and why that made Miss Truesdale upset and how they can fix it for the future. And I think that's a really cool idea because kids are learning from their mistakes, but learning how to fix it for the future. And that's very important in young kids. I know that my mentor teacher used rules and procedures really well at the beginning of the semester, and I'm excited to see how she does that next semester because those kids knew what they were supposed to be doing when to do it how to do it and like for nap time when they came in from recess and their mats were on the floor they knew exactly where to go they had assigned spots every single day like they had to be in the same spot and they knew it was shut eye time to go to sleep but you didn't have a problem with them they knew how to go to the bathroom like they the rules and procedures were taught really well um, the routine I think helps with that they do this you know the same routine every single day and that's what kids need is routine and structure to have an effective classroom and it was pretty cool to watch how four-year-olds behave better than some of my fifth graders I've had in the past my it does kind of help that my mentor teacher has a stern voice but she only uses it when she needs it like her voice is like very fun and energetic and that's what you need in a pre-k teacher but she's not afraid to speak up and use a stern voice or raise her voice when she's not being heard. Like, I really look up to teachers that can do that because as of right now, I haven't earned or I haven't found my teacher voice. And so I think it's pretty cool to watch somebody that actually has it. Professional growth. Over the semester, I've learned a lot about myself. Um... I looked for one word at the beginning of the semester that I could focus on and grow as a person and like what I needed to work on and I think that was confidence coming into the semester I didn't really know 
if I was meant to be a teacher or like if I could do it because like I'm a very soft-spoken person I'm not really one to speak up like I just kind of go go with the flow type but being in this pre-k class has really taught me that I am exactly where I'm supposed to be and that my mentor teacher gave me the confidence that I needed to know that I can be a teacher and like you don't have to be like a loud teacher she said it would come with time but I've gained a lot of confidence as a person as well as a teacher and I think it's just going to grow even more next semester in student teaching um, I've learned time management we've had a bunch of projects going to field placements working um, part-time having classes trying to be social being involved highly on campus it's just taught me a lot of time management and how to prioritize. I've learned that I work really well with to-do lists and calendars and color coding that I didn't know that I um, worked well with until this semester. I learned to be open to new things because um, my whole life I've wanted to be a kindergarten or first grade teacher and I was set on it and I was really scared going into pre-k. I was like it's too young and now I want to be a pre-k teacher so I've learned that I need to keep my mind open. Um, I did learn that you can have too much technology. Um, I, like I said my mentor teacher used videos for literally everything and kids need to learn through play like they need to do the hands-on tactile making stuff and painting stuff and getting messy like they, that's what they need to learn and yes they need to have a drop of technology but I think in a world that is molding to technology, sometimes it could be a bad thing because we're forgetting all the basics. And to create a foundation at this grade level is very important. That foundation is going to set the, set the bar for the rest of their learning career. In my own classroom, I would like to have, a, like I said, a drop a technology, like videos, movies, etc. But I don't want to use them as much as my mentor teacher does, like I said. Um, I would, I do want to have the love and fun atmosphere that my mentor teacher has created in her classroom. Those kids love to be there. They love her. And they know each day that somebody truly cares about them because not all of them have great homes. And so to know that Miss Trizel cares about them is pretty amazing to watch. Um, so pre-k does a pre-k rodeo every spring semester where they learn about Texas. So they learn the, te the Texas Pledge, they learn all about the state of Texas, the state bird, the state flower, the pecan trees, they watch some videos over Texas, and then they color and make all these like different um, pictures that are hung in the cafeteria on the rodeo day and they make their own horse at home and they dress up as cowgirls and cowboys and they teach their parents it's kind of like end of the year um, special thing that the parents come and watch like their program and they have barrel racing and like anything like a rodeo would have just made with little kids and they do a, a line dance that we teach them and then it's just so fun to watch so I would like to if my school doesn't have something like that incorporate that because I think it's a fun way for them to learn and show their learning um, rep I did learn that repetition is very important at this age you have to repeat every single thing you multiple times you have to keep on it and consistency is very important as well like I said, for my future, I'm, I don't know what it holds, but I'm excited now after the semester that it, it's looking up and it's going to end up being where I'm supposed to be, but I'm hoping that it's in a pre-K class instead of a kindergarten or first class because I think that pre-K is where my heart is and that's where I belong, and I think that's all thanks to this placement that I was placed in this semester with this mentor teacher who's been a huge blessing in my life as well as this whole school. I've loved every single thing about Dublin and it and I never would have ever imagined it. Thanks for watching.